Good morning. Hi, James Love students. Hi, James Love families. It's good to see you. It's time for uh, another session of Guidance with Mr. Gray. I hope all of you are doing well today and having a good week. Um, enjoying the time with your family, um, learning some of the things from your packets and your online work that you've had. Hope that's been helpful. Hope you, if you haven't done it yet, you're going to. Or if you already have, you enjoy doing um, the activity that I had for y'all this week about 30 things to do for your emotional health. I thought I'd pick out some of the things that that um, that I did and then do them with you right here. So for the first one I picked out was number one, practice a breathing technique. And it was also related to number 11, practice hot cocoa breathing. Smell the cocoa and cool it off. And so, you know, um, I think for most of you, I, I've talked about before how we how sometimes we can pretend to smell the flowers, blow out the candle, smell the flowers, blow out the candle. And so this one was saying you could pre pretend you got hot chocolate, hot cocoa right here, and you smell it, but then it's real hot, and then you got to blow it off. So you smell the cocoa, blow it off, smell the cocoa, cool it off. And taking those deep breaths can help us to stay calm, help us think if we get anxious or worried or upset, can kind of help us get a little more under control. And the number 12, when I saw that, I thought your, your parents and your grandparents, whatever adult you're staying with, would really appreciate is clean up without being asked. So if you're eating, maybe taking up the dishes and push them to sink or washing them or putting in the dishwasher if you got toys laying around your room, taking the time to clean those up, I'm sure that your your families would really appreciate that. Cleaning up without being asked. The next one, number 14, it said, write what it means to be a good friend. Thinking about what it means to be a good friend. For some of you fourth graders who are going to be going into fifth grade next year, that'll be great. That'll be awesome. And thinking about how you can be a good friend to some of the new people that you'll get to meet. Um, and what you want to look for in a friend, too. Both of those things are important. And then the next one I had underlined was number 19. Practice sitting still for one minute. What sounds did you hear? So this is something that, that you can do, too, is just to sit quietly. Close your eyes and then think. And listen to what you hear. Listen to the different sounds. See how your legs feel, how your feet feel against the ground, noticing your senses, your um, smell, sound, touch, those things, doing that for one minute, trying that for one minute. And then the last one I had underlined was number 25, ask an adult about a career they are interested in. Um, if you're around an adult, ask them what job they do or what, what other job they might be interested in doing at some time. Ask them about it so you can learn about it. Learn about different careers so that we can think about what we might want to do for jo for jobs and careers whenever we get older. Okay. All right. So now we're going to get to our book for this week. So this week I have the book, Sorry, I Forgot to Ask. Sorry, I Forgot to Ask. My story about asking for permission and making an apology. Written by Julia Cook. Illustrated by Kelsey DeWeer. My name is RJ, and I'm in timeout again. It seems like I've been in timeout a lot lately. Friday after school, my best friend Sam and I decided we didn't want to ride the bus, so we walked home instead. On the way home, we had a rock-throwing contest in the field. We took, we took our shoes off and went wading in the frog pond, but we didn't catch any frogs. Then we stopped at the corner store and bought slushies. I got bubblegum blue, blueberry and Sam got grape. When I walked into my house, my mom looked worried. She smiled and ran over and gave me a great big hug. But as soon as she saw the slushy marks on my face, her smile turned into a mad frown. Where have you been? I was so worried about you, she said. Well, Sam and I decided that we didn't want to ride the bus. So, you walked home? Yes, and on the way home, we had a rock-throwing con. RJ, 
you can't just decide not to take the bus. You have to ask for permission. We just spent the last two hours looking for you. Sam's mom and dad were worried. Your teacher was worried. The bus driver was worried. And your dad and I were worried sick. But why are you so mad? All we did was walk home. RJ, I'm upset because you didn't ask for permission and we didn't know where you were. Sorry, I forgot to ask. Sometimes saying sorry just isn't enough, she said. Then I got sent to my timeout chair. On Saturday morning, Sam was over at my house and we were playing video games. We needed to get a code off the internet to win the game. My parents always make me ask for permission before I get on the internet, but my dad was outside washing the car, and my mom was on the phone talking to my Aunt Sylvia. Just get on real quick and look it up, Sam said. We went to my dad's office and logged onto the computer, just as my mom got off the phone. RJ, she said, you know you have to ask for permission before you get on the internet. We were just looking up a game code. What's the big deal? The deal is you know the rule and you broke the rule. Sam, please go home. RJ, I know, I know. Go to my chair for another time out. That afternoon when my little sister Blanche and I got back from our piano lessons, we walked into the house and it smelled like a cup of hot chocolate. My mom had made her ultimate famous triple layer double chocolate cake with whipped cream frosting. There it was, sitting right on the counter. Next to the cake was a note. Dear RJ and Blanche, I'm picking up Grandma. I'll be home in 10 minutes. Your snack is on the table. Love, Mom. I looked over at the table. Apples, string, treat, string cheese, and graham crackers. I don't want to eat this stuff, said Blanche. I want cake. Me too. Should we wait to ask Mom? Well, if we just eat a teeny tiny piece, she probably won't even notice. We both ate a tiny piece. It tasted so good. Then we each had another tiny piece, and another, and another. And then in walked my mom with my grandma. At first, my mom smiled, but when she saw us eating the cake, she got tears in her eyes and her face turned sad. RJ and Blanche, she said, you ate the cake. Yeah, and it's so good, I said. That was Grandma's special birthday cake. I told you we should have asked, RJ, Blanche said. Uh-oh, sorry. Blanche, RJ, go to your chairs. You were both in timeout. So I sat in my chair, waiting for my third time out of the weekend to end. About 16 years later, my dad came over to talk to me. RJ, you were really struggling with asking for permission. You walked home from school without asking. You got home on the inter you got on the internet without asking, and you helped yourself to grandma's special birthday cake without asking and spoiled mom's party plans. You need to do a much better job of asking for permission. When you ask for permission, you should look right at the person when you're ready to ask. Use a calm, pleasant voice and don't talk too fast. Ask, may I please? And then do your best to stay calm if the answer is a no or a yes. Yeah, but when I remember to ask, the answer is usually no, RJ. Just keep asking for permission. The better you are at accepting no the right way, the more likely we'll say yes the next time. I felt really bad about eating my grandma's birthday cake, but I didn't know what to say to her. My mom went to the store and bought another chocolate cake for the party, but it just wasn't the same. On, mon on Monday, when I got back to school, Sam and I got sent to the principal's office. RJ and Sam... He said, you both had everybody really worried on Friday. You can't just decide on your own that you want to walk home from school. You have to ask for permission. 
Now you need to apologize, and just saying the word sorry is not enough. What do I say? I asked. To say you're sorry, you should look right at the person. You've got nothing to fear. Say, I'm sorry, or I apologize for. You must be sincere. Explain your new plan to be the best you can be, and then finish by saying, thanks for listening to me. My principal had both me and Sam practice apologizing the right way. I think we had to do it like 100 times. Then we had to tell our teacher and the bus driver that we were sorry and we wouldn't walk home again without asking for permission. After making that many apologies, I was getting pretty good at it. When I got home from school, I asked my mom to take me over to my grandma's so I could apologize the right way for eating her cake. I realized that just asking for forgiveness is a lot harder, lot harder than just asking for permission in the first place. My grandma loved my apology. She gave me a great big hug. The next Saturday, Grandma and I made an ultimate famous triple layer double chocolate chocolate cake and whipped cream frosting. And we gave it to my mom. The end. Sorry, I forgot to ask. Well, I hope you enjoyed that book and learned from it. Just remember to ask for permission. And whenever we do make, do make a mistake, to make sure that we apologize the right way. We look at the person, say sorry, say how we're going to change it, and learn from that. And so thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you have a great week.